What's going on Mustang family? Here we are. So I wanted to put together a little video on how you can buy a cheap Mustang for someone who's like 15, 16, 17 years old. They're buying the first car. They want a hot rod. They want a Mustang. And this is like what I dreamed about is like all the parts. I think it was muscle Mustangs and fast forwards. They used to have this, um, this section where, well, the whole freaking magazine was just a part, so it was just an advertisement for parts, and you could just look at the headers and the catback exhaust systems, and I just remember dreaming about, like, catback exhaust systems, and, you know, because I think they were, like, for a Flowmaster 40 series catback for an 87 to 92 Mustang, they were, like, four ninety nine or something like that back in the day, or maybe it was, like, three ninety nine or two ninety nine. I can't remember, it was way more than I ever had, and I just remember dreaming about buying that, because it was so expensive, but it was the highest quality products back in the day. Maybe Bassani was around and they were even better, higher quality, but anyway, it just got me made, thinking, what's a fun video to make? And I, I guess the only video that I want to make it, something fun about would be like, how can I help like a younger dude who's looking to buy his first car or girl, looking to buy their first hot rod, um, and you've got maybe, let's see, I had 2200 bucks to spend on my first car, and I think half of it my grandmother gave to me, so I had like 1200 bucks saved up and they split the other half with me so um maybe in today's dollars that's five grand we'll just say so what can you get for five grand so i'm over here on craigslist and let's go to eight cylinders because that's um that's what you want so here we've got a i see a fox body going for 12 grand it's probably in minty, fresh condition. Condition. So I always loved these SN95s because it was the body style after the Fox, and they were like a little newer, a little nicer, and everything. Now my first car was an '84 GT, not much different than this. Although I think in '84 they changed to that's still carbureted engine. These were actually dogs, but they sounded really good. Man, did these cars sound good. That's a minty fresh car. So this is exactly like my first car. This dash, except my there's speakers in the um, dashboard, and bad idea for to put speakers up in the dash right here because all those holes where the speaker uh, you know put sound through like they were just totally smashed in. And the guy Nathan Fouch, I never forget his name. He's from Bellevue, where I was born and raised. He cut holes in the speakers and put these wooden little supports so he could drill these speakers in. And my dad didn't like it. And these seats were torn right here because the... Anyways, there's a lot of things that go wrong with these cars. And basically, they're getting so old right now. I wouldn't really recommend this as your first car because, you know, especially the pre-87s. Fox, the pre um, 87s, So like 84, 85, 86. I think 86 they started fuel injecting them. They're just really... Um, they're just really old by now. And it's going to, you know, it's a lot of work to keep these up. Now, I'm older, so I'm going for reliability these days. But back in the day, I didn't give a crap about reliability. I just wanted something that sounded good and would do burnouts. So that's what I bought. And then soon after, I got into the Turbo Supra MK3, like a 1988 Turbo Supra. And that was the best thing ever because it was luxurious. It was quiet. It was smooth. I could still do burnouts and donuts and drifts. It had independent rear suspension. So it felt like going from going from this thing to an 87 Turbo Supra was like night and day. So I'm letting you know, you can get a Fox body, not that expensive, but, you know, sleek. I like how you use the word sleek. Sleek Fox body, like that's really going to help them sell it. Sleek 1991 Fox body. Um, yeah. Probably been repainted since one fender's shiny, one fender's dull. I've been wrecked. Anyways, you can go with these, but man, they're just so old right now. You're going to need to know how to turn a wrench, and you're going to need to know how to, you know, like my transmission failed. I had, a, I had a till coupe, and the transmission went out. Of course, I was shifting it myself, and I ended up spraying like 120 shot on that car. So they're great cars. You can spray nitrous on them, which is a cheap way to go fast. For, you know, 300 bucks, you can pick up a used nitrous kit and go play, have fun. But the transmission is going to wear out eventually, probably. Um, the rear end, if you're going to drag race it, sometimes they need to be built up a little bit to hold the power and so you can get both wheels to spin when you're doing a burnout and you can get a good launch that way. But the, the upside is they're really cheap to work on 
and you can do just about anything and you can find parts used anywhere. Black on black 65,000 original mile convertible, clean as it gets, no accident, no accidents. John. Hey, his name's John. Probably a good good old boy. 65,000 miles. I thought I might go pick that one up myself. So I've still got a soft spot for those SN95s because it was just so much nicer than the Fox body because um, it just had that kind of more modern design, <laughs> even though it's still just, it's not any better. It just had that more updated styling. I had a crush on them, still do. So you can go with these, uh, these, these, these cars here. Now, as they got newer and newer, I stopped studying them as much because I, got into different cars. I got, like I said, I got into the turbocharged MR2. I put a big turbo on an MR2, tur on an MR2, and then had a couple Supras, and then I got ARC-7 turbo, and then I got uh, like a, a GS300 with a twin turbo super engine in it, and I kind of went that route, and then I did have an LS, now it was an LT1 uh, Firebird that I bought from my buddy. It was an awesome car. So I've had quite a few different cars. Um, you can go the Mustang route, but that I would probably look at. It might be even more better bang for your buck. It's a Camaro bird or a fire chicken. Um, an LS1 car. They're going to be a little bit newer. Like I guess like a 2000 and up. I still think you can get those cars for... Let's just go to Car Gurus because that might be a little bit more reliable source. Let's see here. Let's just check out some prices. Camaro. Camaro Bird. Problem with the LS1s and stuff is it starts getting a little more technical. The engines are further back. You can't work on them. Like, you know, the Fox body, the engine's right there hanging over the front end, even though it's not um, engineering wise, it's not like the best place to put the engine, but. Um, it was easier to work on, and I'm really familiar with that engine bay. I'm not super familiar with the LS1 engine bay and whatnot, so I don't know value-wise. So these prices are a little bit too high. Even CarGuru says it's too high. One of my neighbors, Spooky, had one of these. One of the guys that ran around town, and this was a fast car. He had the orange and white stripes, and he would outrun me every time. If you take a Fox body and an LS1 car, and once you get to about third gear, the LS1 car just starts walking away like it's no big deal. So that's the other thing. If you want to run with the, you're going to get about another 100 horsepower if you get an LS1 car. So I'm leaning that direction if I was you, um, if you had the money to do it. If you don't have the money, I would go look at an MK3 Supra or a Fox body. But I think the best bang for your buck is going to be one of these cars. Another one that you can look at is, so let's just look at the MK3s. Problem with the MK, MK3s is they have rod knock and blown head gaskets, so you have to deal with that and watch out. Make sure there's no, I hate this shit, not into that at all. You could have just left the stock wheels on it bumper hood everything it would have been so much cleaner and he'd be able to get more money for it and it looks like the paint's all too shiny what's going on here oh hey this is in compton he wet it down so that paint looks nice and shiny as soon as that water dries off this paint it's gonna look like a a dried up eraser <laughs> But the cool thing is you can take a buffer and buff the crap out of it and it'll turn out all right, possibly. See, look at him back there. Look what he's got. That's right, he's got one of them LS1 cars. Now he knows what he's doing back there. He's got it jacked up working on it. He bought him a Supra and said, hell with this. It's got blown head gasket, rod knock. I got to get rid of this thing. So the body's damaged up. I don't like all this. This looks really rough. I'd give him 500 for this car. Auto. Anyways, clean ones are out there, but you gotta look around. You gotta know what you're looking for. You don't want to get one with a blown head gasket. You don't want to get one that's knocking. So, 
there are out there though. But if you live in a small town, like when I was living in Nashville, I would get on Craigslist and they're really hard to find. I've seen this one on Craigslist before. He's got some expensive wheels and put a lot of money into it and he's trying to get a lot of money out of it. But the problem is there's not that many buyers and people have a hard time. Okay, here's what here's with these cars. I had a 92 or 91 and then I had like a 95. This is black on black, super slick. It's on my Instagram, super slick. I actually love these cars. I think these cars are freaking awesome. They've got adjustable uh, suspension. They've got adjustable active exhaust. They've got on the front, underneath this front arrow thing goes bang. As soon as you hit like 45, I can't remember exactly. You, so the arrow, it has active arrow. Rear wing pops up and this front splitter comes down. Bang, psh. And then on top of that, you can tighten up the suspension or loosen it up. The only problem is, well, you have to change the timing belt uh, ever so often. Um, a little bit of a pain in the butt to work on. You have to know what you're doing. But there's this guy over, uh, his name's Chai. Is it Chai? I think so. He lives, he's over in Van Nuys. And he works on these. And I ended up fixing mine up, trying to restore it. I think I paid $4,500 or $5,000 for it. It's black on black chrome wheels. Super good looking car. Um, but you can usually get these. This one's got 149,000 miles on. He's asking 42. He'd probably take 35. Um, reliable car, AC's cold. I mean, this car is a 300 horsepower car. This car will go 150 miles an hour. It goes zero to 60 and I don't know, 4.9 or I don't even know, maybe faster. And you can put bigger turbos on it. The stock engine will hold 500, 600, I don't even know. But it'll go as fast as you want to go. Problem is, you'll never be able to get your money out of it. If you put five, ten thousand dollars in this car, you'll still only be able to get like four thousand dollars for it. Because I paid five for mine, I put five into it, and I sold it for five. So at that point, I realized, you know what? I'm just gonna buy a new car and then lose money on that. Bad mistake. Anyways, so I'm trying not to put too much money in cars these days. I'm trying to just drive them and enjoy them, um, and not buy anything new. But so if I was to have to pick a pick a few cars. For a 16 year old, I'd say Turbo Supra. This guy's lowered this price on this one. Yeah, 22 hours ago he just he uh, posted. Um, I think this car was listed at nine previously. It's hard to find one with a shifter that's factory and the shift boot and knob is still in that good of condition. This is the 88, must be because these steel steering wheels are the older style, but. This thing, you know, these old Supers had like digital uh, climate control. You know, this big long ship, but it does have adjustable suspension, cruise, AC, all these cool things. I love these big heavy doors. They sound great when you shut them. I mean, and the seat is just sitting you down perfectly the way that the seat hugs you. It's such a cool car, man. I have to get me another one, but I really recommend these, but you're going to be spoiled after you buy this and you're going to fall in love with it. Um, these are awesome cars. I love all the adjustability with exhaust it has an active exhaust for 1992 I think maybe they started the active exhaust in 95 you'll have to look it up I can't remember but that's an option um, then you've got your Fox bodies and your LS1 cars and then boom 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 you've got your DSMs which I never owned one but I always loved the look of them this guy's got some clean little wheels on it Probably got some modifications, obviously, but getting some subscribers on my phone here. Thank you guys for the support. So I don't, I'm not an expert on these by any means, but I know they're always talking about a four bolt or six bolt bottom end and blah, 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 blah. From what I understand, this is about like a Fox body. You can make them really fast, but you're going to spend a lot of money fixing them up and these cars are so old at this point so is the Turbo Supra but Toyota has a, a better reputation for um, reliability and whatnot so what else Thanks, Nanya, Nanya, for the subscription. You want the Mustang Tumblr. All right, we're going to do that drawing in the morning, and I will announce a winner. Yeah, Eagle Talon, but man, these cars are so old now. 
you're going to spend a lot of money fixing them up. You can get them for really cheap, but so this is a Laser RS, dual overhand Tim Turbo, blah, blah, blah. Cool cars. I went and drove one. This guy was selling it for like 9900 bucks or something. The problem is the timing belt might pop and you got a blown engine and it's just always something with those older cars. But I don't know. Maybe I'm, I don't know because I haven't owned, owned one, but that's just what I've read. So anyways, the four or five cars I think about is a VR4. Um, if you can get a Gallant VR4, that would be cool. Here's one. They're they're over they're overpriced though. It's not the best value. It's essentially a, a four door. It's like an Evo basically. Um, here's one. Here's a clean ninety five. So this is what I had except it was black. I prefer a stock one with the stock wheels. Those are those are the old Eagle wheels that they used to put on the Mustangs. Um, awesome cars though. But thirteen, you know, he'll he'll find somebody. But it might take him a year to find someone to buy for thirteen. Um, so the VR four cars are awesome. You know, we're talking about five to ten thousand dollar price range. Actually, I'm talking about five thousand dollar price range, not even ten thousand. Um, now you can get the three hundred ZX Turbo. You'll never find a Mark IV Super though. Um, there are some Turbo three hundred Zs on here. Here's one for six. That means he could probably you'd probably take five. I've looked at this one. This one doesn't look bad in the pictures. Um, I know if you guys aren't from California, you're just looking at these cars like, oh my gosh, there's so many cars and they're so cheap. There's an abundance of them. I mean, look at those doors. I don't really see too many dings. I see one little ding right there. This side looks something's going on there. I don't know if that's in the picture or what. There's that ding. Body looks decent enough for a five thousand dollar twin turbo charged three hundred ZX black on black with the auto, so you can just cruise with one hand on the wheel, do your burnouts with your other hand, shifting on that shifter. He's got some janky alarm system, janky ass, ugly gold wheels. We'll take those off, spray paint that front lip there, make it look a little better. So you guys get my style. I don't really care for those tiny little tips. Looks like pea shooters. Um, so this could be a nice car, actually. That would be a car I'd like to pick up. Six thousand firm, which means it'll take five thousand. <laughs> um, here's one for thirty-three hundred. Probably want to stay away from this one. If they get too cheap, then you start asking questions like, "Why is this car so cheap?" Well, it's been wrecked for one. It's got a damage, the paint's faded, and who knows? It's got 170,000 miles and the seats are falling apart. So in this case, it's beyond my, when I was younger, I'd go for it because it's so cheap. I'd try to get this car for like 2,500 bucks. But as I got older, I realized you're never going to fix those seats. You're never going to fix that body. You're never going to like take $2,000 and like put a new fender new headlights or or maybe it needs a windshield or what you're never going to do all that stuff even though you think you are you're actually not going to do that and if you are you'll never get your money back so just save your money and just spend the extra couple grand and get the one that has a hundred thousand less miles on it this one's got the 170 the black one had 80 save your two three four five thousand dollars get the one that's a couple thousand dollars more two three thousand dollars more and just save your money on that that's my advice and just get one that's just a little bit nice. You don't have to get a mint one. You just want to get the one that's in between the range of not too expensive, not too cheap where everything's busted, and it's not too high mile. It just There's a sweet spot on all these cars. And I would say this one's probably in the sweet spot unless it has some major mechanical issues that we don't know about. It's selling a little, you know, it's got an auto. So, But, man, if you put a boost control on one of these cars, these cars will fly. They'll be, you know, 300 wheel horsepower pretty easily and they have a lot of torque. I don't know much about these cars, but I was always curious about them. But that technology is so old by now. Um, manual turbo, this looks very suspicious. Yeah, this is this is a scam. Melissa Jumper 366, do not even bother with this. Six, $1,600, this is a scam. I've dealt with this situation before. Um, 
Here's a 91. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Okay, guys, don't look. I might just get this one for myself. What's up with the Florida tags? This is a scam? What is this? Too much stuff going on here. You got a screen. You got a gauge. Yeah, I'm not into all that. You got seat covers. No, that's, that's not my style. I can hang. I can hang with the wheels. I can hang with the the clear the brump the whatever that's called bra. The gaudy looking pipes. I ain't down with that. Eight thousand. We got a dusty engine bay. Some expensive wheels and no front bumper. So the car's been sitting for six months or six years. Can't tell. Engine swap done. Okay, skip. And if it gets too modified, then I don't mess with it because I know I've had my, my first car had an engine swap and it's just a headache. It's always some crap going on. So you want to find something that is not too modified. Just, just don't even bother with this stuff right here. Let someone else deal with that. So there's the 300Z turbos. You're never going to find a Mark IV Supra that's decent. I mean, you can just look at them. They're all... You can find an RX-7, the older... Um, I've owned owned one or one of those. Another co cool car is the Starion, but the RX sevens they run a little rough, the idle a little rough. It's not the best daily driver. You know, it burns oil. Um, the engines go out if you don't know what you're doing. It's just a little bit more maintenance than the average person, but they're they're sh they look amazing and they're very light. They just don't have much torque. Um, and they're not that reliable, and they get terrible gas mileage, and the idle's rough, and a few other things. Not throwing it on the bus. I like the car. It's just, uh, what was the other one I just said? Starion. Now, these are cool. I had one of these, but same situation. The fuel injection sh system sucks on them, and um, I could never get mine running right. But when it ran, it was cool. Mine was the exact same color, exact same year, I believe, as this one. I bought two. They're sitting at this auction lot, and I think I got two of them for like nine hundred dollars. It's cool. It's a cool car. It's like an inline four with a turbo, right? Yeah. Um, but the fuel injection system was just janky, and I could never get it to run right. I didn't want to blow it up. So, but the the wheels are super deep dish. Looks sick. It's got big wide fenders. Such a cool car. Um, but I wouldn't really recommend if you need to drive it every day. They're, they're getting super old. So probably the most reliable thing. I don't know about the LS1 cars, but I've, the whole time I thought this mic was plugged in. It wasn't even plugged in. So I don't know if this audio is going to be any good. My goodness. I just spent 30 minutes talking to the computer. It's not even recording. I'm entertaining myself, I guess. So... Um, Let's see what the newest Mustang that you can get is for under five thousand. Say six. That's a V eight. So you can get a 04. I guess this is a 4.6 liter. Yeah, 260 horse. Those are cool cars. I heard some of them had issues. I don't know much about those cars. All right, here's an 84. This is a lot nicer than mine. I I've seen some, <laughs> I had some of those wheels on mine. I swear, they were the hardest thing to clean because they had these little lines all in them. You can't see them like microscopic lines all the way around and you have to get down and scrub on them and they get so dirty. Um, don't get one of these cars. Just save your everything's busted. <laughs> they're so they're just falling apart at they're because they're so old. 84, 94, 2004, 2014, they're 30 something years old by now. So don't even bother with those. I'd probably go with the LS1 car or a Turbo Supra, that's what I would probably go with. But you could check out those um, VR4s, are awesome. Or, you know, another great car is like a SC300. Um, 
I think those cards are just awesome. What's going on here? My search settings are off. You can get a lot of it. And then if you want to put a turbo, <clears throat> turbo kit on it, I mean, like, here's a five-speed one. It's probably got 250,000 miles, of course, 232. You can get a five-speed one of these. The only thing, it doesn't have a limited slip, but this is off the Super chassis. And, you know, it's a, it's a reliable car. This would be the most reliable car out of all of them, but this would also be the slowest out of all of them. And then as you go, you can add a turbo kit. And make you know 300 at the wheels pretty easily, and then from there you can go on up if you want to add a head gasket or if you want to do whatever you want. But I had an, a 99, and they have a little different tail lights and front end. You want the front end like this. I think it looks a lot better. Anyways, guys, I hope that gives you a few options, and I hope the audio isn't terrible, even though I know it is. But I'm not going to record it again because that it's way too much time invested in this little video. But I hope it serves you right. And if you want some more videos like this, just let me know. Um, if you want the Tumblr, go to the video and let me know.